Hello, everyone, and welcome to SBE Live. Thank you for joining us for today's SBE Tech Talk with Baker Hughes. I'm your host for this broadcast, David Gibson of Gibson Reports. The potential of drilling automation has been discussed for decades, but until recently, little of that value has been realized. Today, we are joined by our friends at Baker Hughes to explore how a new portfolio of automated drilling services and applications is creating real value for operators worldwide. This is achieved by delivering a step change in drilling efficiency, accuracy, and consistency. We'll also dive into three critical elements for automating well construction, expertise, ecosystem, and execution. All right, everybody, as you all know, we are live, so this is your chance to be able to interact with us. Please let us know where you guys are watching from. We'd love to be able to give you a shout out here on the show, as well as this is SP. Give us a like, a share, a subscribe. If you can, the best way to be able to do it is just tag one of your friends in the comment section now. They'll get a notification to be able to come over and join this amazing conversation or be able to watch it along later. All right. So with asking your questions, be sure to put those in because we will be doing a Q&A segment later on so that you can get your answers, questions answered by the experts. All right, before we get to into today's discussion on drilling automation, let's look at today's poll question. Which type of automated drilling service do you believe will deliver the biggest performance improvement over traditional methods? Four answer choices here. A, automated re reservoir navigation. B, automated hydraulics optimization. C, automated on-bottom ROP improvements. And for those that don't know, ROP is rate of penetration. Or D, other. We'll also add... Uh, we also asked this poll question last week to our followers on the SPE LinkedIn page. We will share those results as well as the poll results from this live audience later in the show. So be sure to stay tuned. All right, let's get started and introduce our guest of the day. Joining us is Dr. Matthias Gatzen, Executive Director of Digital Well Construction within Oil Field Services for Baker Hughes. Matthias is responsible for digital business, which is built upon a suite of applications such as drilling automation services, next generation well engineering applications, and advanced analytics offering offerings for customers worldwide. His focus is on leveraging digitalization to drive efficiency, predictability, and safety. Hello, Matthias, and welcome to this SPE Tech Talk. Hey, David. Thanks for having me. And I, as I understand, you have a quick little visual presentation for us that you would like to be able to share to be able to kick off today's show. Absolutely. Let me let me share a couple of slides just to send the context of you know drilling automation and what we're talking about today. So you know, as as we think about drilling automation, the <clears throat> most critical aspect for us is uh, tying the automation into the overall process of delivering a well, and so. In order to do this, we really focus on drilling automation very early on in the process in the well planning stage. And so as we're planning our well, we build a digital twin that we continuously up, uh, you know, update and simulate using our analytics and machine learning tools. That digital twin, we then send out to the rig site and deploy it on the edge or also in the cloud, depending on the time criticality of the application. And ultimately what you do then is you feed that real-time digital twin with service delivery data, so all the sensors, all the actuator data, and continuously update your model and make recommendations for the users or automate for the users so that they can then drive their process. So you're really starting in the digital environment and bring digital out into the physical environment. So if we go to the next slide, how does that actually work? Well. So here we see a, an overview sketch going from right to left. You have your rig and your rig control system. And tied to the rig, you know, you've got a lot of data. You've got a lot of sensors, uh, third-party sensors. We bring on along uh, our own sensors as well, like automatic fluid monitoring systems. And all that is, of course, used to communicate with the bottom hole assembly. Now, if we look to the left, we actually have an edge server on the rig side. And that edge server does the processing and the real-time simulation that I just talked about. And ultimately, that data feed is then sent to our remote centers. And in the remote center, you have your remote engineers that are able to then use that visualization to either uh, manually drive performance optimization 
or if you're going fully automated to monitor and oversee the automation. So automating ultimately is, is tied into the rig side, but can be done remotely. And you have different levels of automation from um, shadowing, advising, or then going fully active control and sending parameters to the rig control system. If we go to the next slide, there's really um, several different levels of automation that we that we look at. The first uh, element is downhole directional automation. So what we do here is we process the downhole data we're getting from our MWD accelerometers and any type of other sensors, and we use that data, process it downhole, and make steering decisions based on that. So that's really a closed loop downhole system. Then you have a second layer that sits on top of that, which is a closed loop surface directional system. So you use your mud pulse telemetry or wired pipe, send data up to the surface and do some processing there. For example, if you wanna change your well plan, that would be necessary. The third element is then the drilling optimization, which leverages either downhole data or surface data and allows you to drive an optimization of your drilling process, well bore hydraulics, hole cleaning and similar. And then if you click one more time, the really the next big step for us is, uh, one click please. The really the next big step for us is, and that's something we, we recently deployed, is automatic reservoir navigation. So now you're able to use your logging while drilling data downhole, bring it up to the surface and make automatic steering uh, uh, commands to really get a maximum reservoir contact. So those are the four elements of automation that we'd like to talk about today. Excellent. I mean, this is a I, from being a guy on the MWD side and, and and directional drilling background. This is like the most exciting stuff we could talk about. So, give us a little bit of background information. How long have you been delivering automated services, and are you implementing these innovations globally? Yeah. So, autom it's, it's, a, it's a great question because automation is really a journey, right? So, you know, it evolves over time. Um, ultimately, you know, we started uh, deploying uh, automation services, closed loop directional control uh, in the 2019 timeframe. Um, and actually, we, we uh, got a world, world oil award for having the first offshore trajectory drilled well. Um, and ever since, we've been continuously adding services to our portfolio. It's kind of like, you know, your, your, your phone, you got a lot of applications and we continuously add more and more applications. So. The way we do this is we look at our, our customers and where they where they see potential for us to improve the drilling process. So one big element, tripping, right? Tr tripping is uh, uh, quite time consuming. So automatic tripping is a service that we added, which takes uh, you know formation data, ECD, ESD limits, and improves your tripping times. Uh, automatic hole cleaning. So how do you uh, uh, maximize the the hole cleaning and ultimately uh, maximize your ROP while doing that? Automatic stringer detection, so detecting a stringer downhole and following a procedure then to minimize the time you lost or to avoid back reaming. And then, you know, the one I just talked about, automatic reservoir navigation, which allows you to, uh, you know, really drive your, your, your maximal reservoir coverage as you're drilling. So we're, the second part is how are we running that or where are we running that? We're, we're really running these services globally. Um, we have customers all over the world that are uh, tapping into these services. So it's not just a regional thing. It's really a, a, a global technology that's being deployed. Excellent. You say automated hole cleaning and the first thought came to my head was uh, putting a Roomba down hole. So, but I know that's not the case. So Matthias, we know that in other industries, automation is a key driver for quality and consistency. How do you see automation impacting these areas in drilling operations? Yeah, so I mean, for us, ultimately, automation is is a is a huge topic, right? And it brings significant benefit to our customers today. And and to be quite frank, there's a, there's a huge opportunity moving forward. So as I said, it's a journey. We're not done yet. We you know, we're, we're developing more and more. So today, you know, we're broadly within Baker Hughes using our automated services um, to really drive more KPI for our customers. We've got more than eight, meter, uh, 8 million meters uh, that we've drilled um, using our automation services. So you know it's it's rapidly expanding from a meterage or from a footage for American uh, listeners. And ultimately, the, the the key thing for us as we're engaging with our customers 
is that we want to bring real tangible results because you know there's in general in the digital space you hear a lot of promises and the 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 the, the ultimate thing for our customers of course if they're utilizing these applications you have to have real KPI that you're measuring and you're driving that uh, performance for your customers. So as we think about automation, you know, what are the key benefits? It's number one, it's repeatability. So delivering consistent, predictable drilling performance every single well, every single time. Second one is efficiency. So we're streamlining our operations with efficient drilling, fewer people on board, and uh, increased ROP. And then the third element is really accuracy. So the, having that uh, you know, precise well placement um, and increasing ultimately the the, um, the uh, efficiency as we're driving our hydrocarbon recovery. So, you know, huge, huge, uh, huge benefits of using these technologies. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. Let's take a moment to remind our audience to get involved in our discussion. Uh, we are curious to know if anyone watching has been involved in drilling projects that use automation and what aspects of those drilling programs were automated. Please let us know your answers in the comment section now, like right over here, right? And don't forget to type in any questions you have uh, for in on today's topic for the chance that it will be answered during our live Q&A segment. Uh, we know this is a very popular subject, uh, so we want all of your questions to come in. All right, Matthias, let's talk about efficiency. I'm sure this is a key enabler for more remote operations, but are there any others, uh, other ways it can add to operation speed or productivity? Yeah, look, I mean, if we think about uh, leveraging automation applications, it's really about, um, in a first step, taking transactional activities and taking those off of our engineers, right? So you 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 take those transactional repetitive tasks and allow the engineers to focus on really more efficient operations. So, you know, if you think about um, you know elements of ROP optimization, right? If you're so busy continuously planning your trajectory, continuously trying to update that, and you you know you lose a little bit of sight on your ROP, that's of course something that that we really don't want to see. So ultimately, we're leveraging the automation to um, take those transactional activities, uh, you know, automate those and freeing up the engineers to focus on driving more value for the customers. You mentioned earlier that one of the main advantages of automations is a more accurate well placement. Uh, explain to our audience how this works and if you can also lead to improvements in production. Yeah, so the the um, more accurate well placement is is a technology we use in our uh, eye track directional drilling application. And so what we do is, um, you know, as I showed in that slide earlier, first of all, we have a downhole control loop that allows you to make downhole steering uh, adjustments uh, without even having to use mud pulse telemetry and talk to the surface. That second layer that we have on top of that is sending the current uh, data to the surface and the system does a calculation of which steering commands are required in order to be exactly on your well plan. And then in an automatic fashion, sends a downlink to the bottom of the assembly and allows you to really make sure that you continuously stay on track. And so for thinking about these type of systems, what you're really doing is you're taking your, your you know, uh, decades of, of, of expertise in how to drill a well and you know the best of the best directional drillers and you're digitizing those and allowing the system then to make these uh, steering commands and so really you know we're seeing a huge huge benefit in using these technologies as i just elaborated earlier because now we're focusing even more on rop optimization and and driving that incremental value for the customer now as you just said you know there's there's some more things that you can do because ultimately, you don't just want to follow, follow a pre-programmed well path. Ultimately, if you're in the reservoir section, you want to go into reservoir navigation. So you want to make sure that you have your maximum reservoir contact. And so that's where the, these, these newest technologies come into space into place. We have a, a service called iTrack Reservoir Navigation Service, which ultimately allows you to take the entire inversion process automated come up with a, a, um, a steering command and then send that down to the system. And so, you know, just to just to mention an example, 
you know, we've been using this uh, uh, quite extensively. And what we're seeing is that first of all, this entire decision-making process as you're navigating in your reservoir section, is much, much faster. And you're really uh, elevating your engineers to oversee the process and focus on how to drive more OP. And so in, 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 in some of our um, applications where we've been using it, not only is the reservoir contact increased and the ultimate production increased later on, but also the ROP is being increased. So in one case, you know, we went from uh, 60 meters an hour to over 80 meters an hour by automating the reservoir navigation process. So not only are you having better reservoir contact, but you're also drilling much faster. Okay, I've got a great follow-up question. As, as the director at large, one of the director at large for the industry steering committee for wellbore survey accuracy, are there any other ways that accuracy can be improved through automation? Look, at, at the end of the day, it's about leveraging the data and running analytics, right? So if you if you think about the data that we're bringing to the surface, we utilize you know our, our cloud analytics and ultimately um, leverage incremental data that a directional driller may not have to make recommendations on the steering. So if you take the downhole data, you know you, you use your cloud applications tied into the automation and have that closed loop control loop, you can actually have a very, very uh, accurate wellbore placement. And so we're seeing quite some excitement in that space as we're um, looking at the results of how we're drilling our, our uh, trajectory wells with the automation service. All right, now we've got like the most challenging question of the day. You referenced the essential need for change management process when kicking off a drilling automation service at a rig. How does that work? And are you meeting any resistance from drillers or other professionals who you feel they are being replaced by a machine? Yeah, so <clears throat> ultimately, as we introduce drilling automation, um, it's not something that you just bring to the rig site, you flip on a big switch and you start using it you know, from, from zero to 100. And I don't know if any of you have you know, uh, any automation system in your vehicle, but it really takes some time to get used to it. And so what we do with our customers as we're introducing automation, we first of all agree on KPI and, and the benefit we can drive leveraging the automation services. And then you know, we take the plan and decide which applications we focus on. Because as, as I'd mentioned, there's a suite of applications. You don't always need every single application for every single well. We then put it together a change management process. And in this change management process, we agree on how we introduce the service over time. We start off with a shadowing. So we run the automation service and we let it shadow. And ultimately the users and also our, our customer experts in the space they look at the data and 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 start gaining trust into the automation service. And you're, you're not actively using it yet. It's, it's, it's a shadowing. Then we switch it in the next stage. Once we accomplished our KPI as per the change management plan, we switch it in the next stage to an advisory mode where the system is giving a recommendation or an advice. And the user says, yes, I accept this. For example, steering parameter or flow rate change. Yes, I accept it or no, I don't accept it. So your, your engineers are still very tightly tied into the process. And then the third um, step that we take is we go to an active mode where we uh, have that closed loop control system. And so, you know, to your second question, are our users uh, concerned that they're being displaced? At the end of the day, you know, what we've been showing case over case is it's not about displacing anybody, you know, any of any, any of the engineers that are out there. It's really about uh, elevating the job to a, more an over, oversight and giving the time to focus on engaging with the customer, driving performance, driving efficiencies into the into the operation. So, if we go through this change management process and we go from shattering advisory to active mode, uh, we're really seeing that. Our, our, our engineers and the users are very, very excited about this technology because it enables them to focus on, on other things. And, you know, a good example is, you know, in the aviation space, you know, the pilots aren't steering the plane the entire time. Once they go, go to, their, uh, to their landing, they're completely refreshed and can focus on that really challenging task. So that's kind of how we drive it. 
Well, Matias, thank you so much for all your input on today's topic. Before we get to the questions asked by our audience, let's take a look at today's poll question results. We asked you, which type of automated service do you believe will deliver the biggest performance improvement over traditional drilling methods? Uh, first here, uh, here are, and here are the results from today's live audience. No, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I believe the the magic answer was D other is what got most of the responses. All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, we posted the same poll questions at the SB linked on. Take a look at those results. There we go. Um, there being auto reservoir, auto reservoir uh, navigation followed by uh, auto hydraulics optimization and then auto ROP improvement and then other. So got a pretty pretty vast difference there between what happened uh in asking the questions online and then with our 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 audience here today uh any thoughts on that no look i i, I think uh you know the the automatic reservoir navigation as we said is is really the the ultimate game for us right because at the end of the day you want to combine all the applications you have and drive the performance but at the end of the day you know you need to make sure you have that maximum reservoir contact and that you're allowing your customers to then complete and then produce the the well uh, in the best manner. So I'm I'm um, I'm, I'm glad that we saw that result. Uh, Wellbore hydraulics and ROP optimization are apps that we're we're widely deploying. You know, uh, any any uh, operation you know benefits from from improving your your hole cleaning, your tripping speeds, your you know, your your real time uh, downhole fluid uh, monitoring, and so on. And then ROP optimization, as said, you know. As we're deploying trajectory drilling, ROP, you know, and, and our automatic drilling service, uh, ROP optimization is a core part of that to make sure that you're actually drilling instantaneous ROP uh, much faster. All right. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part is the live Q&A. All right. So we've got one question here from Sharif. It says, any machine learning algorithms helping with automation? Sharif, thank you so much for your question. We do appreciate it. That 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 is a that is a good question. Uh, so yes, we we are utilizing machine learning, and so especially in the wellbore hydraulics offset analysis space, there's a huge huge benefit of using machine learning. Um, and you know, as I had said, we, we're really driving the fully integrated process from engineering work through bringing all those models into the real time environment. And so it really starts already with your offset analysis. And taking, you know, uh, ultimately a composite approach to your drilling, where you're looking section by section, where have you seen similar section and similar performance around the globe? Um, and then you take that all the way into your real-time environment, where you're feeding your same uh, um, digital twin model with real-time data and continuously optimizing. So it's it's a, it's a really good question. There's a, um, a an element of machine learning and automation, but that's not all. There's a, a, a physics-based element to it and um, a procedural element where we'll bring uh, the, the, the vast experience we've gained over many years um, into, the, into the automation service. Excellent. So I do have another question. What are some of the operating regions where you're seeing the most interest uh, for this from customers? Yeah, so, so David, it's, it's really uh, quite global, right? Um, you know, we, we, we have some, some, um, some very large customers in the Middle East, in Europe, and also smaller customers that are really seeing the benefit of the service. So, you know, we're really running it globally with a diverse uh, set of customers, IOCs, NOCs, uh, even, you know, very, very small customers. Uh, uh, so it's very hard to say where is the one region. It's, it's, it's a global application. And, you know, wherever we're, we have a, a Baker Hughes uh, footprint, you know, we're, we're going in with our customers and, and um, discussing these opportunities. And then, of course, going into uh, into the change management process that I just described earlier. All right, we've got another question here from the audience. So this one's from uh, Vishal. Are there examples of automated algorithms slash software go rogue uh, or in an indefinite loop? How fast can a closed loop system be decoupled and give control back to, to the physical or to somebody there on site? I guess. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, I can speak for our system. We, we don't have any 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 rogue systems. Um, you know, as I said, our, our focus is really about um, 
helping the engineers drill a better well. And so as you're running your automation service, you always have an engineer sitting and making sure that the overall execution of your job is, is running according to, to the plan. And so if we think about our drilling process, uh, you know, just some examples, trajectory drilling, you're not making a steering decision every second or every millisecond like you may be doing in an airplane or in a vehicle. So there's there's always ample time for the, you know, for the highly qualified engineers, directional drillers, depending on which application is, to step in and 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 take over. So ultimately, uh, there's we're seeing little concern there. Also, from a even from a wellbore hydraulics um, example, you know the way we're managing is we're setting set points to the rig control system. So um, you ultimately cannot override any limits that are set up by the operator in the rig control system. So by that you have an um, embedded security mechanism. Excellent. All right. So I, I've got one more final question for you. Does the type of automation applications you run vary by region or the type of drilling operation? Yeah, that's a that's a really good one. Uh, you know, it it, it 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 does it does matter uh, where we're drilling and which applications we're using. So just an example, if we're in an offshore well, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, wellbore hydraulics automation being used just to the you know, just to the very high uh, cost of the, the the spread cost of the rigs um also the long hole cleaning times that you've got in 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 that space um and then if you think about a land market for example uh rop optimization automation is is uh is 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 one of the key key services that we're using in that space and then you've got some applications that are are a little bit, little bit more niche that we don't run globally for example stringer detection you know, somehow you have to have interbedded formations or, or, or similar to make that uh, the use of that application viable for you. Um, so it really does depend on the operational environment. And as said, you know, as we as we discuss with our customers, we sit down and we agree on a set of KPIs. And then, you know, what do we want to drive? And then we take a look at which applications are best suited for that specific uh, application. Awesome. Well, for everybody out there that's watching, uh, for any of the questions that were asked that we didn't get to today, don't worry. Uh, everybody from the Baker Hughes team is going to be getting into the chat and being able to answer those uh, directly. Matthias, th we appreciate you so much for joining us on this SBE Thank Tech you. Talk on unlocking real value with drilling automation. Uh, how should people get in touch with you uh, going forward? Yeah, so you know, just go Matthias Gatson LinkedIn. Long number there, but if you go to Matthias Gatson Baker Hughes, you'll find me. Appreciate anybody that reaches out. Um, you know, love to answer any more questions. Also, you know, any questions that were unanswered today, uh, we'll, we'll get those covered. But I appreciate everybody that joined today, and uh, thank you very much. Well, Dr. Gatson, thank you so much, and thank you uh, so much to Baker Hughes for allowing you to come over here and just chit chat with me for 30 minutes. Uh, you can watch everybody who's watching, you can watch a replay of this episode on the SPE Energy Stream, the industry's digital pulse. Visit streaming.spe.org. I've been your host, David Gibson from Gibson Reports. And as always, know your industry. The energy industry is evolving rapidly. To stay informed, you need relevant content available when and where it's convenient for you. Introducing the SPE Energy Stream, the energy sector's platform for quality content from around the world. Energy Stream gives you access to technical solutions, innovations, trending topics, thought leadership, market outlooks, and education. From original programs to exclusive SPE event presentations, this easy-to-navigate platform features insightful content delivered live and on demand. Explore insights from industry thought leaders then, save the videos that interest you so you can watch them at your convenience. Stay ahead of the curve. Start watching SPE Energy Stream today.